I had a couple of my friends on different occasions call me out on that. Like they called me out on, hey, like, I feel like we don't talk much anymore. I feel like you should have invited me to this thing and you didn't. <laughs> Why does it feel like when you become a mom, you also become a terrible friend? Being a mom sometimes means being a bad friend. And I feel like before you become a mom, this is one of those things that like, you hear people talk about and you try to like mentally prepare yourself for like that transition of like single woman to wife or single woman to mom. And I feel like when you become a wife, it's like got its own thing where you know you may not go out with like your single girlfriends as much but you still have time for them because it's like your husband is a grown adult like it's not like he takes over your life in that kind of way but there are times where it's like okay yeah like if i'm married i want to have married friends so you kind of go through that like transition of whether or not like you're around a lot of single people or you are kind of getting married or engaged around the same time with like your group of friends. I've kind of experienced both. I had a community of seriously dating or like married friends when I actually got engaged and married where I lived at the time, but then I still had lots of friends like in other states and from childhood that were very much single. So I kind of felt like I experienced both situations in that, but when you become a mother, it's real different especially when you are like the first mom in your friend group and that was my experience i was the first mom in my like most immediate friend group and really like my twin sister had a baby and my best friend like what like she's like my sister also had a baby before me but we didn't live in the same place so we all lived in different parts of the country at the time that i was having my first baby and so they weren't necessarily physically around. I could always call them and FaceTime and things. And like, that was amazing because I needed that because that's really all I was getting. None of my friends in person were moms yet. So as much as they want to support, like they don't really know how to support yet. <laughs> like most people, if not all people, unless you grew up around a lot of kids a lot and you kind of like, play a big sister role and you're around children regularly do you really understand like how to support a new mom and so you know fast forward five years since I had my first daughter Sarai like I have gone through so many ups and downs with friendships um as I've navigated my motherhood journey that it's something that I truly am still learning how to navigate because I feel like with every additional kid that I've had there's been a shift in like what my priorities were in friendship. And also with every child, I've come into situations where I felt like I wasn't showing up the right way, trying to show up in ways that I would in the past that no longer work for me now. And it's hard to get to that place where you are self-aware enough to say, hey, I can't show up for you, friend, the way that I want to because I genuinely have so much on my plate over here with my children, my family, and it sucks, and I'm sorry, but there's no like, I'll be better. <laughs> because like right now in my life, I don't know if better in this contest context exists. And this is where I feel like as moms, we fall into like that isolation bucket because it's not that we want to be to ourselves all the time. It's that it is so hard to keep up emotionally, spiritually, physically with little human beings that you birthed and maybe not birthed and also keeping up with grown adults that have a lot more free time than you do. Because I feel like the only time I ever have like friction or conflict about this is when I'm having to experience this with someone who doesn't have kids or is not married or both. And this is not to bash them at all because I actually appreciate the friends that are single and um, have said things to me because I wouldn't have known had they not said something. And unfortunately, those friendships aren't what they were before. I don't think they'll, they'll ever be what they were for. And I think when you become a mom, you also experience like that real time 
concept of, and some people are in your life for a season, and some people are in your life for a lifetime, and the people that are in your life for seasons are usually friends. And could be family even members too. But the people that are in my life for a lifetime and eternal, prayerfully, are my children and my husband. If they so choose to go where I'm going after this life, okay? Because that's the goal, right? Like the reason why they require so much of us is because there's a greater mission on our lives as far as, you know, why we spend so much time with our kids and why we spend so much time with our husbands. It's not just because we would rather them over anyone else. To a certain extent, yes, like a short-term lifespan kind of thing, but something that has been on my heart lately has been like the reason why I'm so intense about making sure that I am the primary source of information for my children and primary source of love and affection for my husband is because that's what keeps us all intact, okay? That's what keeps us all cohesive and on the same page and bonded in a way that the world cannot disrupt or break. And it's when we start to allow the fabric of that to kind of loosen and come apart where you start to have all sorts of issues in your family. You and your husband ain't talking. Your kids don't like you. All you do is 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 yell at your kids or everything is very transactional with your children. Like it can get like that because we are trying to constantly balance all of these relationships that are very difficult to do. And unfortunately, our friends are usually the ones to get cut off first or to get dropped the first because at the end of the day like I have a bigger mission on my life than like nurturing a friendship with somebody because ideally my friend you would also be in a position where you are being nurtured and and, and held and loved in a family setting as well and it doesn't have to be blood like but it could be you know so like everybody has their own journey as far as like where their version of home is like where their spiritual home is where their community is and all of that and i think as we grow especially like when you get past your 20s like i feel like in my 20s i had all these different friends and all these groups and things and as i've grown up becoming a mom getting married and entering my 30s 30s it's like okay i don't have the capacity and I had a couple of my friends on different occasions call me out on that. Like they called me out on, hey, like, I feel like we don't talk much anymore. I feel like you should have invited me to this thing and you didn't, you should have. And, and honestly, like one of the situations I felt so guilty about because it was actually for my wedding. Like one of my very close friends at the time, we, it was in the height of the pandemic and it was one of those pandemic weddings where you had to cancel all your plans and then find something else to do. I got married in my dad's backyard versus going to Mexico for a destination wedding. And it all happened so fast in a matter of three weeks that we decided to do it. And we had a in-person version, which was 30 people max at the time with masks and everything outside. And then, cause we were in Texas, so we could do that. And then we had a virtual, like a Zoom version of our wedding going on so that all of our friends and family and other states and stuff could watch. And somehow when I was emailing and doing all the things to make sure everybody knew when to get on the Zoom and like do all the, you know, wedding stuff, this one close friend didn't get the email and like I hadn't even texted her about it. And she was deeply hurt because she had been very much so part of me and Mark's life. And I just, it just completely, because at this time I'm also a mom of one slash two because our oldest daughter who was what she was nine at the time, um, lived in New York with her mom and still does. And so I, in my brain, I'm thinking about how, you know, I wish our oldest daughter could even be at our wedding. And we tried to make that happen, but we couldn't because it was the pandemic in the beginning of it. And 
New York's situation and just like the feeling out there was just totally different than it was in Texas. So we respected the fact that like we couldn't make that happen and have our daughter with us out on that wedding day, but we still had a little baby. Sarai was 10 months old when we got married. And so like, I had a lot of like family dynamics happening. Um, it was just, it was just a lot. And so anyway, this close friend of mine, um, didn't say anything until later, uh, maybe a few weeks later, but she was deeply hurt that she wasn't considered. And until she said anything, I was like, oh my God, like I assumed you got the email and you just didn't participate, you know? And cause I wasn't, like I said, I had so much going on in my mind that like I could not, I could, my brain was fried, okay? And so when she brought that up, um, it also, came into conversation just like other ways that she felt like I had become distant or had like kind of like let our friendship go to the wayside and she was one of the main people that in the past before I was married before I had babies had because she's a little bit older than me had expressed her disappointment whenever her friends would go and get married or have kids and like forget about her and so here I was you know a, a, a little while later doing the very same thing to her and that broke my heart because I think that we don't mean to do that, right? But my God, it, it's a lot to carry, right? It's a lot to carry to manage all these relationships for th like the first time. Like I've never been a mom before. I've never been married before. I've never been a mom of multiple kids. And so like, as every child came, I had to like reevaluate again and again. And also my time got shorter and shorter and shorter. And so, for me, I, I can't, I, I'm like, I, I, I was at a loss. Um, there was a season where another friend brought up the same thing. I had been talking about it, just like feeling like I was a terrible friend and I, I didn't have time for anything but low maintenance friends in this season of motherhood that I was in. This was like a few months ago, maybe last year now. And uh, she texted me and I, I feel like she thought that I, maybe I was like sub threading her or something, but I really wasn't. I was talking in a very general sense, but like I've had, you know, I think she felt personal because it was technically when I think about friendship, like she was one of my very close friends. But when I got married and, and started having kids, it was cool in the beginning because she understood. But it was like the more kids I had, the less I reached out and the less I reached out, and the less I reached out. And she also lived in another state now versus we used to live in the same place. So. She texted me and just feeling like, hey, you know, just calling me out on it. And um, in a gentle way, obviously, but calling me out, like saying something. And I appreciated her for that because I was like, that wasn't, that thread wasn't about you, but I understand, you know, like, this is the current state of our friendship. The current state of our friendship is like, we don't really have an intimate friendship right now. Like, we don't really have an active friendship right now. And, and that sucks. Like, it sucks, but I I have to prioritize in this season of my life, right? I have three young babies under the age of four. No, three, no, three. I have four young babies under the age of five. <laughs> I, I have a four month old, so my brain is still trying to catch up, okay, with the amount of children uh, that we have. We have five children. Like, I, 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 even with my oldest daughter, I honestly, I hate where our relationship is right now. I hate where our relationship is right now because we don't get to see her a lot. And the type of mom that I strive to be is an active one. One that is very tuned in. Even though she's my stepdaughter, I know how important it is to have a intimate relationship with your children, no matter if you birth them or not. And with her, it is more of a friendship than like a mother-daughter relationship because she has a mother who is very, very active in her life. She has a grandmother that's very active in her life. So, you know, I've always felt like I didn't want to impose or um, force myself in, you know what I mean? And because of the dynamics of our private life in that, in that arena, um, we just haven't been able to see her a lot. And obviously a lot of that is on us, like not being able to make that happen as much as we'd like to. Um, 
there's also just like realistic situations where like we can't afford it and that's that's like at the crux of it all with her it's like we can't afford it we can't afford to have mark go out there um and see her a lot we can't afford to like have her come here multiple times a year because it's just expensive and that's just a whole nother dynamic and conversation for another time and one that i'm honestly not prepared to even have publicly um but it's just another kind of like angle of like how i have been impacted by motherhood in the arena of friendship and I'm still figuring it out. Like I'm still figuring out how to emotionally and socially um, show up for my friends. Um, I thank God for the friends that I do have that are gracing me in this season who, especially like my mom friends who get it, like we'll send a voice memo or a voice chat in text and not respond for two weeks or a month and it'll be like a 10 minute long <laughs> voice chat because it's like okay i have 10 minutes in a bathroom to like give you everything all the updates how you doing this is what's going on i love you i miss you like all the things like i that's all i have capacity for right now and i know that when my children get older i'll be able to spread out <laughs> a little bit more but i think it's just it's okay. I've, I've had to become okay with the friendships in my life not necessarily being as fruitful as I hope they would be. Um, because I'm sacrificing that so that I can show up for my family to my best ability. And outside of my family, it may look like I'm just, I don't care about nobody else and I'm not, you know, aware or whatever but it's really not that it's like i only have so much you know you're only 24 hours in a day and for me to be able to show up as the type of mom and the type of wife that i know god is calling me to be like i don't have enough bandwidth to do that and be the best friend the friend that goes to everybody's birthday dinner and the friend that calls once a week and the friend that texts once a week like i'm not that friend I, I'm not that friend, but also like pause. Motherhood also showed me that a lot of my friendships were rooted in my ability to people please. And it came from that place where even though I had a lot of friends and I know those friends cared about me and I cared about them, the root of my activity within friendship was very much so in trying to prove my worthiness of being a friend. Like, I did not want people to think that I didn't care. I didn't want people to think that I wasn't a good friend. So I would overexert myself. And I had the time and the space to as a single woman, so I would. And so I was always going to everybody's things and always inviting people, people to all of my things. And I always had big birthdays and I always did big... I, that was me. But motherhood really showed me that the place that I was actually sourcing and operating from in my friendships was not the right place so it was also like in motherhood i had to reconstruct what i even wanted out of friendship first off like what did i need from a friend and then what kind of friend could i be like what can i do <laughs> what can i do and so what i could do and what i have done which has been so much better for me and I think the people that I am friends with to this day has been to communicate. Like, hey, I cannot show up for you in this way that I know you deserve. I'm sorry about that. I just have a lot on my plate. I don't want you to feel like I've ghosted you. I don't want you to feel like I don't care. But in this season, I genuinely love you but I can't show up as the friend that you deserve or the type of friend that I even want to be. Because quite frankly, I have to choose. And my friends that I've said that to have completely embraced that. Especially because most of them are also moms, but may not have as many kids or whatever. But they've accepted that. And through that, me being honest and transparent and vulnerable, 
they've actually set in stone that they actually care about me the person and not just like what I come with or what I can give. And I think that's what happens in motherhood too, is you realize that what friendships or relationships, period, are there because that person really loves you regardless of what you can do for them and who's been around because it's been convenient or quote unquote profitable for them. And that's, I think, the hard reality of adult friendships in general is that sometimes you actually get to the end of a relationship and you have to say, okay, it's over. And not because there was this climactic, terrible fallout, but simply the season has changed and that's okay. <sighs> so I hope I'm not alone in this in all these feelings about motherhood and friendship because I think a lot of us feel this way but just don't know how to articulate it and need just a space to be able to articulate it. So if you feel these things like me or just need a place to vent, comment down below. Like let's help each other out. Let's be a safe place for each other because it's hard out here. <laughs> it's hard out here for millennial mamas, okay? And for my Gen Z mamas, like, who are coming up, child, it's a lot, okay? But I pray that this place, this channel, my platform, is a place where you can find comfort, where you can find peace, where you can find relatability in a way that feels safe and ultimately just you feel like, all right, yes, it's like, I get it. Like, I'm here with you. Like, that, we just all trying to figure it out, right? We're all trying to figure it out. And so, yeah, I, child, I'm trying to figure it out too. And I'm just bringing y'all along with me. <laughs>